Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the last part of the ATM series. In this video, we're going to complete the deposit page and the balance page. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Let's open up our Python file and let's pick up where we left off here in the deposit page. We're going to get started here under enter amount label. Let's look at our blueprint. We have this header and this label as well. Now we're going to create this entry box. Let's call it deposit entry. Let's create a text variable. Let's call it cash. So when the user enters something into this entry box, it's going to be stored in this cash variable. Let's make it of type string. Let's give this entry box a font. And a width of 22. Let's pack it. See what that looks like. All right, there's the entry box. Let's make it a little bit taller. We're gonna give it an iPad of seven. See it again. All right, that looks better. Let's look at our blueprint again. Now we're gonna create this button. Call it the enter button. We want it to say enter. When the user clicks on this button, we want to call in a function, deposit cash. Let's create it up here. Let's bring in our current balance. And let's add whatever the user deposits into this current balance. That amount is stored in our cash text variable that we just created. We're gonna use .get to retrieve the amount stored in it. And because it's of type string, we have to use typecasting to convert it into an int because current balance is an int. Once the user deposits their cash, we want to send them back to the menu page. At this point, we want to set cash to an empty string. If we don't do this, when the user comes back to this page, this cash amount that they deposited is still going to be displayed in the entry box. Let's give this button a border. Set the border width to three. And let's give the button a width of 40 and a height of three. Let's pack it. Let's give it a patty of 10. That way it's not so close to the deposit entry box. See what that looks like. All right, that looks good. Let's go back to our blueprint. Let's add this two-tone look. So we're gonna create a label and we're just gonna give it some color. Let's name it the two-tone label. Let's go back to w3schools.com. And I'm going to go with 25%, same color that I've been using for the other pages. Let's pack this. Let's give it a 
let's give this a fill of both and expand true that way it fills up the rest of the space let's look at it all right there it is let's enter an amount 123 enter and it takes us back to the menu page the only page we have left is the balance page let's look at our blueprint for that this one has the same header and bottom frame that we've been using for the other pages so we're going to copy and paste that code from the other pages let's do that we can actually copy it from this page here so let's just copy this heading label Control c and let's go down to that page paste it in there now let's grab the bottom frame Control c and Control v to paste fix the indentation see what that looks like all right there's the header there's the bottom frame let's look at our blueprint now we're going to create this label that displays the current balance before we do this we're going to create a text variable at the very top of our project this text variable we're going to update it each time the user withdraws or deposits money and we're also going to set it to the text variable that is going to display our current balance so let's go to the top of our project right in here we're going to use a dictionary to create this text variable let's call it balance and let's make it of type int now let's update this text variable whenever the user withdraws or deposits money so let's go to the withdraw page in here so we're going to bring that text variable in this is a step that i should have already done i just completely forgot about it that's why we're doing it now Now let's go down to our other entry function and update that as well right here now let's go down to our deposit page and let's update it there as well Now let's go down to our balance page and let's create a label let's call it balance label let's create a text variable and let's set it equal to that text variable that has the current balance first let's bring in our current balance global variable let's update our balance text variable here as well Now let's set this text variable equal to this balance. Let's give this a font. make our text white let's give this label the same color that we used on this label 
and let's go ahead and practice. And let's run this. There's our balance, but we want it to display over here on the left. So we're going to add another parameter to this label. We're going to use anchor west. And we're going to use fill equals x. If not, it won't appear on the left. Let's try it again. All right, there it is. Let's change the background color as well. For that, we're going to go up to this frame here. This is the frame that holds all the widgets of this page. And let's use the same color. All right, let's try it again. All right, let's look at our blueprint again. Now let's create these two buttons. This one's gonna take the user back to the menu page and this one's gonna take them back to the start page. Let's create a frame for these buttons. Let's call it button frame. Let's give it a color. Let's go back to w3schools.com. We're going to use this 25%. That's going to give it that two-tone look. Let's pack this. And we want it to fill up the rest of the space. So we're going to use fill equals both and expand equals true. The first one is going to be the menu button. We want it on our button frame. When the user clicks on this button, we want to call in a function menu. Let's create it up here. And this is just going to take the user back to the menu page. We want it to say menu. Let's give it a border. Border width of three. Let's give it a width, just like the other buttons, 50 and a height of five. Let's use the grid. This is going to be in row zero, column zero. And let's give it a patio five to create separation between this button and the exit button. Now let's create the exit button. Let's call it the exit button. Let's put this on the button frame. I want it to say exit. We want it to call on a function exit. Let's create it up here. And this is going to take the user back to the start page. Give it a border. Border with a three. And just like with the other button, a width of 50 and a height of five. Let's put it on the grid. 
going to be in row one, right under the other button. And it's going to be in the same column. And let's also give it a patty of five. All right, let's see what that looks like. All right, here are two buttons. Notice the time is missing the zero from 40. We're gonna fix that right now. So we'll go down to your tick function here. And I want you to add a space in here and in here as well. So we're gonna copy this and we're gonna do this for each one of our tick functions of each page. Paste it in there. And I think we have one more. That should be the last one. Yep, it is. Let's run it again. This is the final product. Let's test it out. Enter the incorrect password and it doesn't let us in. Correct password is one, two, three. Let's view our balance. By default, we set it to 1000. Go back to the menu. Let's make a withdraw of 300. View the balance. Let's go back to the menu. Let's make another withdraw using other amount. Let's go with 50 and let's view the balance again. Now it's 650 and let's make a deposit. Let's go with 50 bucks. View the balance again and it's back to 700. Let's go back to the main menu and click exit. And that's the project. And that's going to wrap it up. I appreciate you guys watching the ATM series and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.